The cool move I'm going to show you today is the corkscrew turn from Laguna Seca on Gran Turismo 2. Basically, the corkscrew turn is one of the hardest turns to execute. What you need to do is approach it towards the right-hand side or more the outside lane. You know, slow down, shift it to a lower gear, and drop down. And you can cut a little bit without being penalized for taking that turn. So give it a shot. One of the new added features on Gran Turismo 2 is the rally mode. The difference between this and the regular road race is the handling of the cars. Basically, since it is a dirt mode, you would have to take the turns a little bit earlier and use your brakes earlier in order to make your car drift. So you would drift through a turn rather than slow down and take a turn. It takes some time to master, so give it a shot. It's the best-selling racing video game of all time. What will it be like when it runs on the PlayStation 2, a console 10 times more powerful than anyone out there now? This is Gran Turismo 2000, the next game in the Gran Turismo series produced by Kazunori Yamauchi. Recently, he gave PlayStation Underground an exclusive interview on his plans to take advantage of the new console. Although early in development, he hinted at a whole new level of video gaming. This time out, we hope to change the way people enjoy racing games. There'll be something new in the entertainment experience and how users are part of the game. I'd like to say more, but the exact details are still being said. The biggest difference is that the PlayStation 2 will let us make the graphics and sound quality 100 times better. I want to create racing that's even more realistic than the racing you see on TV. For the first time, we can have open cars so you can see the driver. Open Perhaps you'll be able to choose your own helmet and racing suit. I plan to increase the number of cars, adding 5 to 10 for each territory, Europe, Japan and North America. I might include the new Corvettes and new Camaro. There are many cars I'd like to add, but gamers should understand it takes a tremendous amount of negotiation to license a car from its maker. If you don't see your favorite car in the game, it's not because they didn't want it. Would it help if gamers wrote to manufacturers of cars they'd like to see in the game? <laughs> yes! Along with the new cars, I would like to add maybe 5 to 10 new courses, including dirt tracks and the drag racing mode. The PlayStation 2 gives us the power to change the weather as well as the time of day for each course. This will add lots of variety. We also now have the opportunity to develop a more advanced artificial intelligence. We want the computer-driven cars to react to what you do with an almost human emotion. If you cut one of them off, that driver might show his anger by racing harder against you. Or he might spin and get scared and you would feel it. I can't go into more details just yet. Another new factor is the PlayStation 2's new DualShock 2 analog controller. It registers 256 levels of pressure sensitivity. We're experimenting with this and hope to use it for a more subtle control of braking. In GT1, we needed to have anti-lock braking. That's not as realistic as what we can now achieve. Gamers always ask me if car damage will ever be visible. The manufacturers don't want their cars to blow up or be battered. I feel the same way, so that will not change. But I hope to create some effect that shows the user the extent of any damage. Plans have been announced for PlayStation 2 to be supported by a broadband network in 2001. We wondered what effect this might have on the Gran Turismo series. I have a vision of Gran Turismo's network racing. It's much bigger than one-to-one, -one, but I can't go into specifics yet. One thing a network could do is let racers share times and establish rankings. This is a very important part of racing games. But in addition, network could let them share communication on how to take certain corners or courses. That is very important to me as well.
Gran Turismo is fulfilling a love for cars that Yamauchi-san has had ever since he was a boy. Now in developing the series, he gets to travel the world and test its greatest cars on its most famous tracks. But he's made a discovery. Playing the video game has improved my real race driving versus the other way around. Just two days ago, I was on the circuit at Motegi in Japan. And I realized that my performance had improved drastically because I played Gran Turismo 2. You better keep sharpening your own racing skills because when you drive Gran Turismo 2000 on the PlayStation 2, it's a whole new level of power and intensity. Do you have the reflexes to cut it? I've always loved cars. As a child, I dreamed of being a race car driver. But that's even less likely in Japan than it is in North America or Europe. I created Gran Turismo because I always wanted to work with cars. I didn't expect the game to sell as well as it did. It has a real driving feel and graphics very close to reality. Those things didn't really exist in the racing genre until then. I made the first Gran Turismo for Japan with mostly Japanese cars. I'm making Gran Turismo 2 for the world. We're going to have about 400 cars on 20 tracks. We brought some of the cars here to test them and capture photos and sound. My goal is that each user everywhere can actually drive the car that you own or want to buy. Or just admire and will never be able to purchase. I want the owner of a car to feel that driving the car in the game is exactly like driving the car on the road. I create the car from start to finish. Today I took photographs from all angles to record details like tires, headlights and hazard lights, so I can reproduce these cars exactly. I get the plans, performance data and all the color samples from the manufacturer and apply them to the model. It takes about a week to make a car for the game. If there are problems, it could take a month. In GT1, I didn't want cars to spin when they collided so that you could keep playing the game. But gamers told me they want damage. GT2 will have an option for car damage. If you choose it and your car is hit, it will spin or become tougher to handle. But the damage will just affect how the car handles, not how it looks. One very important change is that we are going to have dirt tracks. The cars will be able to skid around. And Laguna Seca will be one of the tracks. Our job is course design. We draw the course line, model it, then apply textures and landscapes. It's very valuable for us to come to Laguna Seca. We knew from pictures how the turns here would bank, but now we can walk and drive them so we can put their exact feel in the game. In Gran Turismo 2, unlike other racing games, it's not important to just go fast. Sometimes speed is not as much a factor as skill. Slowing down can be the most important thing.
I have a driving school, and Yamauchi-san was one of my students. But I didn't know he was the producer of Gran Turismo. The things he was learning in my school, he put into the game's driving license test. How to accelerate, how to brake, how to turn the corner. If you want to enjoy Gran Turismo 2 the most, do not think of it as a video game. Drive as if you're in a real car. Drive at the highest level possible for you, and the game will teach you and raise you to a new level of enjoyment. Laguna Seca has a famous corner called the Corkscrew. I've known about it ever since I was a kid, but growing up in Japan, I never thought I'd see it with my own eyes. The day before yesterday, I drove around it and the whole course in a Viper. I thought to myself, this is my dream come true. What's 10 times more powerful than any console out there now? What plays DVD movies? And what works with your current PlayStation games and lets you use your existing controller, memory card, and other licensed Sony peripherals? If you haven't heard by now, it's PlayStation 2 coming to North America in the fall of 2000. How's it changing games? We sent a team to Japan for a closer look. Keep in mind that we're giving you sneak previews of games that are very early in development. This game is called Bouncer from Square. It's not a rendered CG movie, it's someone playing in real time. The PS2 is able to crunch millions of numbers and render all these details on the fly. Check out the fire and the spraying water. They're made up of thousands of particles. Never before could so many particles be on screen at once, offering a new level of realism. This is Namco's Tekken Tag Tournament. The models are more complex than ever before. The blades of grass can move individually in the wind. Watch how the light moves across the stone. You can't do this without substantial computing power. In Dark Cloud, an RPG from Sony Computer Entertainment, hair and cloth can move subtly. The main character builds a village on the fly. All kinds of new gameplay are possible. In A-Train from Art Dink, you build cities and then manage their railroad systems. PlayStation 2 gives the sixth version of the game the fastest action ever, with more trains and full 3D for the first time. A new DualShock 2 analog controller comes with the PlayStation 2, and it does something really cool. It registers not just which button you push, but how hard you push it, to 256 levels of pressure sensitivity. In Gran Turismo 2000, that means more sensitive acceleration and braking. You can push the edge of the car's performance with greater precision. The controller also affects games like the new Ninja Gaiden title coming from Tecmo. If you press lightly, the ninja throws his star short. If you press hard, he throws it far. How hard do you want to punch? How high do you want to jump? I just love all the new control the DualShock 2 allows. We switch now to the battlefields of 16th century Japan. It's Kessen from Koei. The East takes on the West in a historic struggle for the fate of the country. You control as many as 200 troops on screen at one time. The game's producer explains what's happening. We use what we call agent technology. When you move a group, its members are aware of each other and act individually, adjusting to what others are doing around them. The result is very lifelike. The new console also makes it possible for characters to express emotion. I've dreamed of this for 20 years, that the power of games could be combined with the grand sweep and emotion of movies. The time has come for this game. Hundreds of companies worldwide have signed on to explore technical and creative power that no one's ever had before. We can't predict what games will look like, 
but we can't commit to helping you as a PlayStation Underground subscriber try them first. It's not a bad way to be starting a new century.